Joined now by Republican presidential candidate and former governor of Arkansas, Asa Hutchinson. Uh, governor Hutchinson, thank you for joining us. Before we get to the campaign, I want to ask you from your perspective as a former federal prosecutor, how serious do you think these charges uh, from uh, Jack Smith are against President Trump, former President Trump, and how damning is the evidence that he's presented? Well, I've tried scores of federal criminal trials and taken them to a jury, and uh, the cases don't get any more serious than what's been outlined by uh, Jack Smith, because you're talking about uh, the allegations of not handling our nation's top secrets in accordance with law. You're talking about obstruction of justice, and uh, these are serious, and obviously they're uh, factually well-based because uh, they lay out so many facts in the indictment. Now, obviously, uh, you're going to hear another side whenever the defense presents uh, their case, but uh, this is serious, and obviously Donald Trump should take them seriously, but the American people should, because this case is most likely not going to come to trial before voters in Iowa and New Hampshire are going to have to decide the case uh, or decide the vote, which is going to involve them evaluating the seriousness of these charges and uh, I view them serious and disqualifying, actually, for a commander-in-chief. Disqualifying. Well, I want to ask you about that, the, the, the timing. Um, based on your experience, do you think it is a real possibility that this trial uh, could go forward, that Trump could be convicted uh, and sentenced before the presidential election in November? It could. Uh, it, ordinarily, this kind of case would come uh, in that order. I would estimate a year under the normal circumstances. Uh, but it all depends upon how much the judge is going to hold the counsel's feet to the fire and say this is important in the public interest, that uh, this is handled in, a, in a, an appropriate way and not drug out. Now, ordinarily, you have the defense trying to drag it out, and there's going to be some real serious legal issues here. So I can see that this would be extended beyond the election date just because of the nature of this case. But I can also see that between, between June of next year and October the election, that this case would be set for trial. Now, they might extend it because there is an election. But... That really uh, invokes the political time frame into the judge setting the calendar, and that should not be a consideration. There have been a, some talk about pardons. You know, I've seen some of some of your uh, some of your other Republicans running saying that they would pardon Trump. But what I want to ask you about is that the question of of a self pardon. Uh, what, what is your read on it? Uh, can can a, can a president pardon himself? There, there's, this has obviously never been tested by the Supreme Court and never been attempted. You know, I, from a legal standpoint, a constitutional standpoint, uh, that uh, is a question that the courts would have to resolve. I'm doubtful of it. I don't think that's uh, what the Constitution intends in giving the president the pardon power. Uh, but most importantly, it would be inappropriate, unseemly, and, uh, and although I can certainly see a Donald Trump doing that. That's exactly uh, what he would intend if he got elected president. Uh, and if it was not brought to trial before then, uh, he's likely to issue that as well. 56% uh, of Americans under a Maris poll say uh, Donald Trump should drop out of the race under these circumstances. And that's the biggest challenge politically is that uh, independent voters particularly are not going to move in the GOP direction if Trump is the nominee under these circumstances and under his promise really to uh, enact uh, retribution, that's not what we need. And, and I think that is a serious political issue uh, as we go forward next year. And you agree with those 56 percent. You think Donald Trump should drop out of this race? I've said that uh, some time ago. Uh, and it's based upon the fact that you should put the office of the presidency uh, and our country above yourself. And uh, whenever you've got these serious allegations against you, whenever you've got uh, the challenge uh, of multiple different investigations during the course of the next year, it's not fair to the country. 
And certainly, it's not fair to uh, the party that wants to get this country back on track. And so, to me, uh, that is the high-level consideration uh, the candidates should give to the important office of president in making that decision for the country's interest. So, yes, I think that he should drop out. Clearly, he's not going to. This is going to be decided by the voters, which is the American process. But the American voters are going to have to decide on the merits of these charges. And the whole concept uh, of the re that so many Republican leaders are adopting, that this is the weaponization of the Justice Department. And I think they've made some bad decisions. Uh, I can certainly disagree with many of the decisions they've made, particularly Jim Comey uh, and some of his in reference to uh, Hillary Clinton. But in terms of the overall charge of weaponization of the uh, Justice Department, look at Donald Trump. He's already declared that he, if he's elected president, he's going to appoint a special prosecutor to go after the Biden family. That's called a weaponization of the Justice Department. And so let's back off of these accusations and let's get back to being the party of the rule of law, of the justice system, supporting law enforcement, and the equal application of the law. Let's don't undermine the greatest justice system and criminal justice system and rule of law in the world today, this side of heaven. Uh, on Thursday, the RNC rejected your request to eliminate the, the requirement that to be in the debate, you have to pledge to uh, support the eventual Republican nominee, regardless of who that is. So how are you going to handle that? Are you going to be willing to make that pledge, which would be effectively pledging to support Donald Trump uh, if he actually won the nomination? Well, you'd have to uh, make the pledge based on the fact that Donald Trump is not going to be our nominee and you're confident of it. Therefore, you can sign a, a statement saying you're going to support the nominee of the party. I'm not going to, uh, you know, support uh, just like uh, other voters are not going to support somebody for president who is uh, uh, under indictment that is uh, potentially convicted at that time. Uh, and so... Uh, that's not uh, where I'm going to be, but we're going to make that debate stage, and Donald Trump will not be the nominee of the party, and I'm sure that's how those that participate in it uh, will view that. But it's not a pleasant uh, way to start off the debate. The RNC, I have great respect for that institution. I've served on it. Uh, they're trying to hold the party together, but we need to concentrate on supporting the principles of the party, which is the rule of law, support of law enforcement, uh, and law and order versus simply trying to circle the wagons around Donald Trump and making sure he's protected uh, going into next year. All right, Governor Ace Hutchinson, thank you very much for joining us. Hi, everyone. George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.